we were finally getting some answers to a mystery that was over 50 years old. Now on 11 at 11 and only on 9 on your side, an exclusive interview with the son of the Ohio man who lived for years under the identity of an eight year old child. Good evening, everyone. I'm Craig McKee. Tanya O'Rourke has the night off. We first told you about this story last night at 11. Police identified this man as Robert Ivan Nichols. For years, he was known as Joseph Newton Chandler III. After he died in 2002, investigators determined he wasn't who he said he was. Joseph Newton Chandler III was actually an eight-year-old boy who died in a car accident back in 1945. Investigators figured out the identity of the mystery man, all thanks to DNA evidence. Nichols' son lives right here in Cincinnati. and Jake Weil spoke with him exclusively tonight. And Jake, there are still a lot of questions he wants answered. Yeah, sure. There sure are, Craig. It all unfolds in a few parts. Why did this guy, I, Robert Ivan Nichols, leave his family? And where did he end up going? Not only that, but why did he assume the identity of a dead eight-year-old boy? Well, tonight we're learning some of the details of the U.S. Marshals investigation from Robert's son. This, I think, is important. Philip Nichols reflecting. It was the most recent photograph they had of him prior to his death. His dad committed suicide in 2002. Fast forward 16 years to U.S. Marshals knocking on Philip's door. Came out of the blue. It was quite amazing in a way and, and uh, a bit of a shock. Philip remembers the real identity of his dad, Robert Ivan Nichols. He was a very quiet man. He didn't really interact with us kids. Mom was in charge of the discipline. He worked at GE in Louisville. His son says he was inventive, building a kayak and even a homemade machine gun as a boy. He was able to figure out how to put all those gears and everything together. He did that in his own mind. A World War II veteran in Purple Heart recipient, Philip believes Robert suffered from PTSD. I, I think the best way to describe him is very quiet. When Philip was a teenager, Robert divorced his wife and left on two days' notice. I have always thought that it had to do with child support. And at 16, that was the last time Philip ever saw his father. We hold no animosity towards him for what took place. The big question Philip still has now, what did his dad do after he left? U.S. Marshals told him Robert moved to Michigan and then to Northern California. The Napa area is, is one of the regions that he's been associated with. At some point, we now know he went to a social security office in North Dakota where he took on the identity of an eight-year-old boy who died in a car crash in 1945. He had a number written down on a piece of paper. He handed it to the clerk. He says, I've lost my card. Can I get another one? They printed him up another one and paid the three bucks or whatever it was, and now he's another person. And from that point on, his name was Joseph Newton Chandler III. I know at least my brothers and I uh, had always wished that he had found peace, that he had found uh, a happy life someplace. Now, investigators tracked Robert to Philip with DNA evidence. Again, Philip is happy one part of the mystery is solved, but Craig, you know, there's still that outstanding issue of where exactly he was on the map during all of that time. Absolutely. And since the story actually broke on Thursday, there have been a lot of theories about who Robert really was and the life he lived while he was gone. Yeah, one of those theories is actually uh, maybe a connection to the Zodiac Killer. In fact, uh, just looking at a picture back and forth, you're able to see almost a d direct connection with that, not only on top of that, but also the location of where this guy was in California, in the Napa area, made it very easy to make that connection. Absolutely, and I had a chance to actually talk with uh, Philip about those similarities mm -hmm. and those two pictures, and here's what he had to say. I've seen that drawing. What, what, I mean, what, what's your take on... Well, I don't, I don't see the result. I mean, I, I guess in a stretch of the imagination, it's possible, but I don't think it was him. But you know, it's been so many years ago, and uh, no telling what transpired. Uh, but my gut feeling, uh, no, I don't put the two of them together. 
And you can see the two pictures there behind right. us right now. Philip told me he's hoping for answers. When I asked him if any of those answers were to point to his dad possibly being the Zodiac killer, he said he would still want to know. Now, as for the U.S. Marshals, they cannot confirm or deny at this point whether or not he is actually the Zodiac killer. Certainly makes you think, though. Very interesting story, I tell you that. All right, Jake Ryle reporting for us tonight. Thank you, Jake.